Good morning, everyone. And uh, today we're going to talk, uh, yeah, about training strategies that actually work that you can utilize in 2021. Right. So uh, the inspiration kind of for this came from uh, uh, seeing yet another, I think it was an article um, about uh, kind of the keys to success in your e-learning. And, and they were going on about uh, like your e-learning has to be engaging. And of course, that article was sponsored by an authoring tool or, or a learning platform or something like that. And they were like, yeah, it has to be engaging and it has to be interactive. And I thought like, well, when you say engaging, what do you really mean? And how do you really achieve that? And when, when was the last time when I was learning something, you know, for work or uh, for, for a hobby? that uh, I thought, yeah, I wish this was more engaging. And I thought that probably this is not what really matters, right? And then we started talking what, what does matter. And uh, uh, we came up with a list of things that, uh, you know, maybe strategies is, is a bold word, right? <laughs> yeah, let's think, call it approaches. Yeah, let's, let's call it approaches or angles or something like this. The strategy is... Uh, what you form of it, right? The strategy is when you take those approaches, you apply to the tasks uh, you have at hand, considering the resources you have available, and then you come up with your own strategy. If you need any help with, with that, you come and talk to us as well. You're always welcome to discuss anything. And uh, uh, when we talk about those approaches, I actually wanted to kind of circle back. I see there are quite a few new people here. Uh, to circle back to something that was like a hit topic from last year, I will you know, briefly cover this right now. And uh, if you want to know more, we have actually launched our own YouTube channel. Right now, it uh, contains um, only the breakfast, uh, uh, breakfast recordings from last year, but we will be producing more content. Well, obviously, there will be more breakfasts and all the recordings will be available there. But but also we'll be producing more content that uh, uh, goes beyond just uh, Zoom meetings and uh, maybe a little bit more uh, kind of more directed towards certain aspects uh, and, and uh, maybe shorter and, you know, that you can consume between the breakfasts. So um, um, having said that, if, if you want to learn more about what we talked about last year, you know, we'll send you the link. But I wanted to start with something, and I hope everyone can see my screen. Can someone with the camera on wave and tell me? That, <laughs> I yeah, can wave. I can oh, yeah. See, yeah. oh, yeah, right. We have a different computer there. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Um, uh, it's always embarrassing to find out that you've been presenting for 25 minutes without a screen share and everyone was just too polite to ask what's going on. Um, like, were you trying to show us something <laughs> yeah. for the past half hour? Like, really happened. So, um, right. So, the first approach uh, to your e-learning strategy this year, I think, absolutely needs to be the sales approach, right? Um, and what we mean by sales approach, again, this was a topic of a whole breakfast, but quickly to recap this, is when you're trying to sell something or someone tries to sell you something, the, the first question to, uh, that comes to your mind is, well, why should I buy this? Right? So someone comes to you and says, hey, you need to subscribe to Netflix. And you're like, why? Um, this is my first reaction. <laughs> hey, uh, stop, you need to try this. Uh, uh, Mediterranean amazing skin face cream and we will start rubbing it on you while you walk to <laughs> your bank in, in your shopping mall um, stuff like that and uh, why why are you doing this to me so everyone when, when you come to someone and say hey you need to you need to learn about uh, uh, know your customer practices you need to know about anti-money laundering you need to know about IT security and was like why 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 yeah. why if you don't ask uh, if you don't ask yourself, first of all, and then you don't answer it for them, you will just miss out on this. Like People will need to be forced into this. No one understands really why. No one has time to stop and think, why would I need uh, uh, IT safety? Like I was, I was fine before you asked me to do this, right? Yeah. So can you please it's, like, just move along? No. 
uh, why, why should I do this? And so the answer to why in learning is uh, quite simple, but it has to be answered explicitly. It has to be on the cover of the course or in the email that you send about it. It's uh, what do you gain or what do you stand to lose if you don't take this? So if you take this course, uh, don't just say, you know, it's a course on time management. Uh, if you take this course, you will have more time in the evening for yourself, right? If you take this course, then on Friday night, you will want to go out or, you know, sit and watch a movie, not to fall with your face into your couch mm -hmm. and just, you know, switch off. If you don't take this course um, and something bad happens because you didn't know, you will be liable. You know, you can scare people. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. You know, scare is, is a great sales technique as well. A lot of people, uh, in fact, a lot of people uh, that learn, they don't kind of care about uh, gaining much more. You know, people are motivated by different things and some people are content with the salary that they have, with the bonuses that they occasionally receive, with the job that they do nine to five and so on. But what they don't want to do is to lose that, right? So you say, okay, you know what happened to the guy who, uh, who was the reason for the last scam email? No? Yeah, because no one does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay to talk about things like that. And, and again, it has to be personal. It, it, you can't say, okay, we as a company have suffered loss of $5 billion last year uh, all around the globe because uh, of uh, uh, scam emails and IT security breaches. Like, do so, I care? No. All right. So, uh, and, you know, just another question that people ask, is this the cheapest option, right? Someone tells me, hey, you, uh, again, subscribe to Netflix. And I'm like, why? Well, because it has all the cinema in the world. And I'm like, yeah, well, do I really need to pay all this money when I can, you know, just rent a couple of movies for a couple of bucks from Google, which I already have, something like that. Or someone tells you, hey, buy this uh, um, online course on uh, how to be happier and I'm like well why do I need the whole course when I can just you know buy a book right so you have to answer this question as well when you send someone a course on uh, those new products you have to also confirm that this is the fastest you know and you know time is money in in, in learners mind so this is the fastest cheapest easiest uh, less intrusive option to actually learn about everything and not go ahead and just read the brochure or you know just i'll read, find those pro read the law <laughs> yeah yeah or like yeah is your course really the easiest way to learn about the anti-money laundering for me or gdpr for me maybe reading a law is the fastest thing right or you know uh, i thought the course would be faster but now that i started it i'd just rather read the law right that's yeah <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> that's those, a very those, bad those, course <laughs> yeah those those things that need to be answered um in terms of uh, uh actually illustrating this we have uh, uh, a kind of maybe a bad example for customers therefore we will not give you the name of the customer but this is our customer who kind of failed on this front yeah and uh, i think that the failure was that we uh, kind of sales when you sell the course right that sale happens at the point of sale, like it, it's in the store, right? So what's our store? It's an LMS. So you right. go there, you're trying to, uh, you, you are uh, trying to get your course. And what we figured out by just following the users, following the learners face-to-face, -face, that was before actually the COVID situation. So we wanted to figure out what is happening when the person gets the course and how they are studying and what, uh, what is the main obstacle? So what we understood that the main obstacle in selling that course were direct managers of the people are trying to uh, teach. Uh, we are talking about the retail chain. So what we understood that the store managers do not believe in learning at all. It's not about e-learning, not e-learning. They don't believe in learning at all. Yeah, because people have to work. They yeah, <laughs> they, they need these people to work. So what hampered the result was not that our learners were not motivated or they, they, they would feel that this learning is not relevant, but it actually were direct managers precluding the whole thing from happening. So, uh, and this is one of the things we have to think about, I think, in 2021, especially because we are taking all this distance work, distance learning thing that really uh, 
to try and figure out what's going on at the point of sale. Right. That's... Talk to the learners, uh, follow them, and uh, you will find out that sometimes by just removing those external obstacles, you can solve so many things. Well, uh, I, I actually uh, kind of see a different lesson in this. I, I remember the client and I, I remember the situation, but I, th I think that uh, the problem is like, uh, imagine you're a boss of, of, of a company. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, well, no, let's, let's take it another way. So imagine you're a guy who tries to sell a coffee machine. Right. So you come to an office and, you know, you show everyone a coffee machine and all the employees are like, yeah, this is an amazing coffee machine. That's great coffee. We all want that. Yeah. And then you say, OK, excellent. Now buy it. And they say, OK, our boss has to approve it. And then the boss says, what? A coffee machine like you already have a, a teapot. Mm -hmm. Peace out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, and there you go. You didn't make a sale because you don't have to sell this to people who will be using it. You also have to sell it to people who are essentially paying for this uh, or the, who are the decision makers. And uh, a good salesperson will know that uh, it's important to have a decision maker on board, not just the actual users be excited about that. And uh, that was a case of, I think, uh, uh, forgetting to sell to the decision makers, right? Or forgetting to sell to the gatekeepers of so Gate, learning. Yeah. And these are very often direct managers. Right. And what we see in many companies that those divisions where uh, direct managers, line managers care about learning, it's much easier to sell to the learners. Right. Because it, it's, again, lead by example kind of thing. So very often when we think about marketing our courses, and we'll talk about it right now, uh, we have to think about all of the stakeholders, all of the audience, right? right? So, okay, um, sales approach. Again, we have like a whole hour talk on this uh, if, if you want to know the exact sales tricks to use. But generally, think as a salesperson and uh, uh, think of your learners as consumers who spend their time, attention, uh, energy on, on learning and you want to actually uh, sell to them or not just to them, but also to other key stakeholders in the process. Same similar thing uh, goes to marketing, right? Um, uh, by the way, if you know a movie, type it in the comments. I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very much interested in the previous one uh, and in this one and all the uh, upcoming. We'll see how many you can guess. Not, not all of them, I'm sure. Um, so the marketing approach. Right, the marketing approach. So uh, first of all, I think when we uh, think about learners, we call them learners, we kind of assume that you know these are the people who work for us, who are motivated to work, and who need to um, uh, 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 gain this knowledge and want to it, and, and we need to give them this knowledge in the most condensed way. But uh, in fact, that's, uh, that's just people, right? And they have their own motivations, right? Uh, and and uh, they have their own experiences, not just at work, but also in life. They have different lifestyles. And uh, we have to think about this uh, as well. And now when the uh, border between life and work and home uh, have have disappeared pretty much for a lot of people, especially in the audiences that we work mostly with, you know, like office workers, then uh, uh, it's even more so, it's, it's even more important to consider that, you know, they are not learners. They are not here to work and learn. They are people who have like maybe kids around, who uh, 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 are maybe tired, who maybe uh, uh, have hobbies and interests that lie beyond and so on. So this is this is important, this people approach. Uh, another part in marketing that we emphasize, and this is actually what we did another hour again on our YouTube channel, um, is cross-selling, upselling, and, and all other marketing techniques. Uh, essentially, cross-selling means that uh, when I come to uh, buy skis in, in a shop, someone approaches me and says, hey, great skis do you also want to buy boots and you also want to buy this uh, uh, jacket and maybe you also want to buy a skiing trip somewhere 
and uh, I came for one thing, but I, you know, bought more, <laughs> bought, bought, bought five things yeah. in the end, right? And it happens everywhere if you look at it. You go online, hey, people who shopped for this, shopped for that as well. You bought these shoes, you know, check out those jeans and uh, so on and so on. It happens all the time everywhere, except learning, right? And learning, very rarely when you finish a course, it tells you, hey, you finish the course on anti-money laundering. Well, how about uh, a course on uh, uh, data protection, right? Or you finish the course on uh, uh, management skills. Well, how about this course specifically on uh, giving feedback, right? Yeah. Uh, or you know, time management and then uh, uh, working with uh, Microsoft Outlook calendar. Maybe those two things go together. Uh, um, and uh, it's just a way to, you know, sell more learning to people through uh, not really sales techniques, but just, you know, at least offering those things. And you can see there's a burger and potatoes or you know, fries. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and that is exactly what needs to be done. And very rarely we see that uh, in, and, uh, in learning. Actually, yeah. However, actually, in the last couple of years, I see more and more of a trend to define personas when we are producing learning. Right. And that more and more companies are interested in doing it and more and more of them are doing that internally, which is brilliant because when we start thinking about these people, not about like learners, yeah, because that's a very narrow view, yeah, but as people and we start listing their main uh, most important pain points, you know, in their work and most important uh, you know, motivators, then it becomes much easier to approach it as a marketing project because yeah. you, you think about them as consumers again, uh, you think about their behavior, lifestyle, and with all the COVID situation, of course, it becomes more important because there are these new behaviors and new situations, uh, right. right? And we'll talk about a bit later today, but- Speaking, uh, speaking of personas and uh, people's kind of values, um, uh, I have an example for from again we will not you know we, we don't name companies when we think it might so long be as they <laughs> yeah. unless unless it's a pure yeah. compliment and we just say hey guys you are absolutely the best Please yeah. everyone be like them but um in this case so it's a huge fmcg company international company and uh, they have a huge library of courses and uh, they they have invested a lot of resources into creating you know, those e-learning libraries and materials uh, for, for their people, but people, you know, don't learn online. They they hate online learning and, and they want to go and sit in a classroom or, you know, fly somewhere and, you know, sit in a classroom. And again, even before, you know, travel was out of question, um, that was a huge problem for them. And, and we started talking to them and generally we found out that uh, people in their company, the employees, they view uh travel and networking and you know staying in hotels and learning in those fancy conference rooms as investment in them they when when they get to this training they feel that they are valued they feel that the company has spent all this money and resources and actually let them go away from their job for a couple of days to build their own kind of brand and weight inside the company and so on and that is actually like true learning you know the, the learning that shows you, you know, you're valued as, a, as, a, as an employee. Not everyone gets to that, of course. But e-learning, it's something that, you know, everyone gets. It's available to everyone. It's available immediately. Uh, and it feels like the company didn't sp spend uh, enough on, on doing that. And uh, uh, when someone gives me a course on the same topic, but online, I'm like, yeah, probably they, they don't value me as much. And I hate that and I don't want to. So that was the perception. And that was just, you know, people's aspect to uh, to, to different modes of learning that was really hampering the and adoption. I think the morale of this situation is that basically in this situation, e-learning is uncompetitive because uh, yes. why they are not using it because they do not perceive it as valuable because when they think about the face-to-face -face training, they see a lot of investment, yeah. their own time and travel and stuff, but a lot of value. Whereas in e-learning, they see an investment, but they don't see the benefit of but, using it. So it becomes a kind of a, you trying to sell old uh, it's, button it's, phone 
uh, against iPhone. Uh, but it's 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 actually funny that an FMCG company basically consists yeah. of marketing people exclusively, right? This is all they do. They market their you know uh, product stuff, the products to consumers, and. <laughs> Uh, uh, this is a classic marketing problem. Okay, we have this new thing which kind of replaces the old thing and everyone sort of loves the old thing and the new thing is viewed as inferior. Well, that is a classic marketing problem that can be solved with marketing. And you yeah. know, where, where else if, if not in that company? So good luck, guys. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, uh, one final thing on, uh, on the marketing angle is uh, uh, the viral stuff. Right. Uh, um, unless you're tired of hearing about viruses and, you know, if you've heard <laughs> yeah. about viruses in the past year or so. Um, but uh, that is that is also important. This is something that really helps <laughs> for once and uh, something that needs to be kind of programmed and designed into your learning. You have to think about things where uh, uh, if, if 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 you've created this, this course, uh, what are the chances that uh, the person who took it will share it with someone else or will tell about it or will say that, you know, it's great to their colleagues. So um, these things, again, we spoke about this in, in the marketing, our you know, specific uh, approaches to this uh, are already there on the YouTube channel. In general, this is another marketing aspect uh, that you have to think about uh, uh, when you know, considering the marketing approach to your learning strategy uh, this year. Right, so the next part is, um, again, don't forget to write the movie names. Uh, uh, the next part is the planning, right? And planning has become a disaster, I think, over the past year. And therefore, it's uh, number, uh, maybe even number one priority. This is something new, right? So we don't have something on planning. Maybe we will want to expand on this in one of the next breakfast again. And let us know but uh first of all the like the super simple thing that you know started i started to hate in the past year is when people lie to me about times right uh someone sends me uh, a questionnaire and says okay it's going to take you three minutes to fill it out and you know by the fifth minute i'm like someone lied to me and i hate it maybe you know there's one more minute but you know tell me it's five tell me it's 10 minutes you know i will find 10 minutes i will do your questionnaire but don't lie to me that you know it's a two three minute object because you know it, it just messes with my planning you know I, I had like five minutes until my next call i wanted to help you you know why are you yeah. doing this to me same thing with courses you know we we are used to slapping like 15 minutes course or 30 minutes course on the cover but you know do we really measure this this often um no not really so, so Sometimes when you know, it says a 15 minute course, you know, it takes me maybe half an hour and uh, uh, I can't just fit it in the slot that I wanted to because, you know, someone didn't care enough or lied and thought that, you know, if we just put shorter uh, time, it will be more. It's where compelling. marketing approach <laughs> right, right. It goes beyond okay, reasonable, will right. beyond reasonable. Yes. Right. So, so uh, yeah, marketing approach marketing kind of messes with this. As one of uh, my customers, clients, uh, and he had head of mark, actually not the head of learning, but head of marketing in one big telco company told me that never fake it. So, uh, so even you're, you're using marketing marketing approach and trying to sell your course do not fake it do not lie right especially right now when people are so kind of the the whole way of consuming learning and uh working is so different right true so uh yeah simple things like you know not lying about how much time is gonna take uh, second is people are not very good at planning right yeah. so if you help them by just suggesting how to plan stuff um they are more likely to actually do what you've planned for them so i, I don't mean like right in their calendars although that might be uh, yeah, and i uh, think this here's this very good example you were telling me that uh prescription drugs they right. always tell you when to take it right before eating during eating and actually not all of them need that you can take it any time of the day yeah, but right. they are doing this right because they want to build this kind of a, a habit habits of yeah i i have to take that pill now right, right. so when with drugs are like antibiotics it's important that you take all the, the whole course of them and so on so here's again if you are selling a course if course is being launched 
you can yeah suggest when to take it yeah true so um if if, if someone suggests you to take a pill a day at some point you know by the end of the day when you're already in bed like shit i forgot my vitamins yeah um and uh, if if someone tells you okay this needs to be done uh, before breakfast you're like well okay that gives me some idea and then you know it helps me same thing with courses you can say okay well this is a five minute video that we want to watch you on fridays right so we call it you know call it you know the friday tips and tricks from uh, the ceo or call it the march marathon so people understand that it needs to be done in march or uh, you know, any, any, anything else that defines them, you know, take your your morning shot of, uh, uh, oh, it, we call it entire breakfast and we run at the same slot. <laughs> right, we're so doing we, exactly right. that same yeah. thing. So yeah. uh, uh, call it, uh, you know, uh, uh, a wisdom shot of, uh, uh, of the day or something like that. So uh, help people find and fill that slot with, with your learning because otherwise it will get lost uh, everywhere else. And again, you're, uh, you are battling against all the distractors, uh, including you know, number one distractor, you know, work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, what helps is the consistent time and place. Uh, I was last year, I was uh, teaching a remote course in uh, higher school of economics. Uh, and uh, and uh, we had a bit of a problem, right? So supposedly everything was happening in Microsoft Teams. There was like a very nice place set up for all the courses and all the professors. Uh, all the students were there, and uh, uh, the most like the official way to communicate in HSE is through email, which is Outlook based. Uh, but we also had a Zoom chat. Oh, sorry, not Zoom Teams. chat, but uh, no, not Teams, but the Telegram chat. A Telegram from, chat from like years before when the course was just forming, where all the teachers were there, all the professors, and all the students as well. And uh, uh, oftentimes, you know, you just go there and someone asks like, okay, when, when is this or that happening? Can you just you know, reply to that? And uh, yes, there's an agenda somewhere. Yes, it's scheduled somewhere on Teams or in the Outlook calendar. And one of those places, we don't know. But, you know, someone will yes. just tell you in, in Telegram. So every time you, you have a question, you just go and ask in Telegram, someone tells you, right? And then also Zoom comes into play because it turns out that not, our, uh, not everyone can join Teams screen sharing for whatever reason and zoom somehow works for everyone automatically so uh, uh, now you have an additional question okay are we meeting on zoom or in teams can someone give me a link and you can put a million links in the calendar no one cares anymore everyone just goes to the chat and just asks and uh, uh, that's and then there was another chat you know the one with uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the professors for us with our students <laughs> um, and, and you know now you have two chats you know and and this became a mess really really quickly so the easier way is to just say okay this happens every Monday at nine o'clock in the same time and so every week this training happens you know it, maybe it's not as convenient primarily for, for, you know, whatever planning reasons, but it will pay off in the end when uh, learners get used to the fact that, hey, where is my entire breakfast this week? You know, right. It doesn't happen. Uh, we're bi-weekly, by the way. If, if it's your first time here, then, you know, every two weeks. Uh, that's important. Right. So the next thing, uh, the next approach is, well, you can guess it, right? <laughs> uh, it's about psychology. It's about how we feel emotionally about right now and how we have to care about uh, each other in 2021. Um, I don't know your situation, but I'm really tired about of online meetings. I have been to a million online conferences last year. Uh, as speaker, uh, more often as, uh, as a participant, and I've watched recordings and when someone tells me that hey we'll we'll do another conference and, you know there's one upcoming in March for me for example when I have to speak and I'm like do I really want that no I don't really want it and uh, we're all a little bit tired of sitting on zoom and thank you by the way for sitting on zoom <laughs> with us today but uh, yeah it's it's something that you have to like Thing. hey do we really want to schedule another zoom training like is there any other way to work around that right so uh, while uh, moving something from real life to zoom seems like a very cheap super convenient option just think about that fatigue try to think about yourself try to think about people who might have a different job with way more meetings than you for example 
Um, another thing is that um, uh, right now we are all, you know, just too tired to to be self reliant to even enjoy the flexibility that e learning offers. Right. So when you send me an e learning course. Um, and so, okay, you can take it at any, any time you want. I'm like, I don't want to. Like, <laughs> yeah. there, there is no time that I want to. So instead, maybe there is uh, a better way to actually look at the uh, kind of guidance, you know, something that we talked about in planning, but also with other things, like walk me through what I need to do with this course, right? Uh, walk me through the deadlines. Re keep reminding me. And uh, surprisingly, before constant reminders from people, you know, especially salespeople who send me like four emails before they get a call with me were annoying. Now, sometimes I'm like, yeah, thanks for reminding me for the fourth time. Finally, you know, you, you got yeah, to the point where, uh, 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 where I, actually, I, I really wanted to do it. And, you know, as a salesperson, you know, we do sales a lot. Um, uh, it's the same. You know, I, I write person like a fifth email and they're like, yeah, thanks. Actually, you know, sorry for not answering previous four emails. I was just all over the place. You know, let's do that. And, you know, the meetings are now, uh, uh, people miss meetings a lot, I think, because again, you know, yeah, because flexibility one, yeah. and planning, you know, yeah. just out of the window right now. So, yeah. Um, what else? Um, uh, yeah. Get, one, go retro. <laughs> right. So uh, that was actually Ryder's suggestions. He was like, hey, uh, uh, especially that the uh, uh, head of creative department, our, our like uh, art director, Fintesh, she comes from uh, uh, print and design from, you know, she joined us more than 10 years ago, probably. Um, uh, uh, why don't we just print something out for, for once, right? We had this entire Christmas uh, party in January for all <laughs> things, but uh, at that Christmas party, everyone was, you know, home at zoom we do not meet in the office you know, unless it's like this uh, but uh, uh, everyone got uh, a bottle of uh, wine or in fact five little bottles of wine for wine tasting and you know a little you know pre-packaged snacks kind of like you get in an, in an airline and everyone was having the same things in front of their camera and it was like super fun it was pre-planned and pre uh, pre-agreed and uh, the cool thing is having this actual physical thing when you're doing this training so sometimes i think like why can't we print out the workbook for a course and send it to you like mail it post it to you so that when you are taking the course you have something physical from it to hold on to why can't we and again again at home i can't always print out things you know and you have no idea or maybe you do how many people print things out in the workplace to learn and they don't have access to those huge corporate printers anymore and they can't do this at home and it maybe hampers them so think back uh, to, yeah, to the, the paper the, things yeah another idea yeah of course and some of you are of, of the companies and we are of course are trying to be very kind of uh caring about the planet and stuff and printing a lot of stuff is a bad idea but sometimes it might be a good idea but another way to go retro is to use a uh, audio all right. Uh, I was interviewing uh, a person uh, who I hope uh, will join in Tay very soon, and uh, he has uh, actually uh, education in script writing. And I was asking, what kind of scripts were you learning to write? It was TV and uh, cinema and radio plays. Right. And I remember it right. Something like like listening to. Okay, I mean, people used to listen to the radio, and what they were listening to was a. Uh, uh, football plays, hockey plays, you know. Uh, right. you, 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 people were listening to like pretty football, much everything before TV. Football matches on football radio, matches, and it somehow yeah. worked for them. And you know, if if you can uh, kind of root for your football team over radio, then probably you can also learn something over radio. And yeah, it depends. Works. We were discussing with Sergey. So, what can you learn on uh, using just audio channel, so right. to say, and. Uh, you can actually, of course, you cannot learn something that involves a lot of math because you would then need to be doing that or seeing right. that. But if we, we want to work with some soft skills, so some not, management not, skills, not math, not software, not machinery assembly, not stuff, but you know, not maybe that... processes you have to see, but soft skills, people skills, negotiations, uh, sales, uh, management, uh, leadership, all, all, all yeah. that stuff. It's uh, it can uh, be an audio course. I, I, uh, I learn, like, not a, I listen to YouTube a lot, right? I don't watch YouTube a lot, right? But I actually listen to, uh, to YouTube a lot. 
lot uh, in my car. So this is kind of like you know, I use YouTube as podcast. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't, I don't know if it's uh, uh, like in your country, uh, it, it might be a bigger or a smaller thing or, you know, for, for you personally. I know people who listen to tons of podcasts. It's a huge, huge uh, learning medium in the United States, for example. Uh, but uh, this is something that you can definitely try and offer people instead of a course, instead of a video. It's also might be easier to produce, might be more fun to produce because you know it doesn't have to be just a talking head where someone just drones on the microphone for you know an hour about how to be a good salesperson. It can be like a real radio play with different voices sectors with effects. If you listen to BBC Radio, um, what's it? World BBC World, I think they're called the one that says 100.5 FM in Latvia at least. So uh, these guys, they you know their reporters are amazing at you know collecting sound bites and you know the background noises and you know people's emotions and their own yeah, commentary. Cause... It's it's a little bit of an art, and we we would be very happy to uh, to try this with you as well. But I think that. Uh, uh, you can kind of uh, in, in these days step a little bit back to give people you know a little bit of breathing space in in, in what is happening to them right now. Okay. Um, uh, uh, again, link linking into that. So uh, you don't know this movie, I bet you. So <laughs> that's uh, that's hard to crack. Uh, attention deficit, right? So this is something that we all have. We already talked about this. One thing I think this year you have to accept is that people will be multitasking, right? Uh, raise your hand if you're answering emails right now while listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, no, ra no, write a plus if you are not in the <laughs> chat. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you, you will see the zero pluses right now. Yeah, because uh, in multitasking, from what I learned um, uh, reading books on that, uh, is generally a bad idea. But the reality of today is that people are just bound to do that. Right. Right. The, we, and we have to accept it. They will be multitasking, taking your learning. Uh, uh, being uh, on uh, you know Zoom calls and so on, and uh, uh, once you accept it, there are basically two ways to deal with it. One, uh, first of all, you have to like one. You just accept it. You stop fooling yourself that you know people are yeah. listening to to our Zoom call. You know, our, uh, a professor is giving a lecture. You know, and there's a 200 people listening to this, and they will all become better managers in the end. No. Uh, uh actually the more managerial the higher up the position is the more chances are that you know people are not paying attention to this so you introduce things into your program into your learning that will keep them occupied right it's never been more important than before uh and you know multitasking has not been prevalent and you know right now multitasking is not about answering emails it's also about tending to your children making sure that uh, you know the soup is uh still in its place <laughs> sorry in the but i had a zoom call and one of the ladies on the zoom call said sorry i'm preparing soup right okay. now so give, give me a minute, minute. so <laughs> this is of course reality I, yeah i have like uh for some reason uh i think uh, Bolt Foods have hacked into my Zoom account and they always time their deliveries exactly <laughs> when you exactly, are on exactly when I'm on a call. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it's like that. And you can be either like strict about it and you know, employ measures to combat it, like we're trying to engage you all the time and also deliver good content. But um, also, you can just say, okay, yeah, multitasking is acceptable, and you can do that, and uh, uh, you can think about ways how you create, uh, kind of build your learning around the fact that people will be doing a million things. So you help them with, you know, reiterating the context all the time. You know, we're talking about this right now, and you know, just in case you missed our, you know, five. Like think about, like again, radio shows maybe, right? What I hate about radio shows uh, is when they don't tell who the guest is, right? So at the yeah. beginning of the hour, they invite a guest, like a super interesting person with yeah. you know, lots of things on, on their mind, smart guy or, or, or smart woman, you know, explaining things. And I'm like, yeah, I'm listening, I'm so engaged, but I have no idea who's talking. Because you like, are one minute late to the I'm, show. Yeah, 
exactly. And, you know, I will spend like half an hour there. I will endure like three uh, advertising breaks, but, you know, they will not tell. And they were like, hey, welcome back. Thanks for listening to us. Here's another question to our guest. I'm like, what guest? <laughs> who, you, who is the guest? Tell me. I want to Google them, right? I want to subscribe to their, you know, podcast or something. So, uh, so me, Ravis, and here's Sergey. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're listening to Inter Breakfast, uh, a bi-weekly show on Zoom that is also available on our YouTube channel. So, uh, yeah, exactly that thing. Exactly. And, uh, but, uh, and, and, and now an advertising break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, th think about the fact, you know, uh, that that is happening, accept it, help people uh, overcome this. Um, another thing is uh, people need kind of like a set of shelves to put their knowledge in and there is no easier way than to use their work process, process as basis for their learning, right? Like for this year, you know, for 2021, forget learning that uh, is abstract. Right, abstract doesn't work anymore. Anything that can't be used immediately, anything that I can't mentally tie to a certain thing that I do in my job, uh, daily or weekly or monthly, uh, will will just you know whew, go past me. And uh, uh, if 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 uh, you're talking about a product, you know, explain how that products come in my day. Like I come at work, customer comes in, you know, they ask for this product, and I have to go there and like try and be in my head all the time. So uh, again, is... thinking about personas. So if you True. know your yeah, if you know your customer, it's easy to tie those things. I think right. Like right now, I'm working on a quite a big project dealing with anti-money laundering, <laughs> which is the topic number one in uh, uh, any financial institutions. Uh, and what we are trying to do is really to go back, uh, away from abstract, right? from general regulations and ideas to things, to very simple things like you look at your customer profile, you see the industry, think about that. You see that they are marked... Uh, you know, with that marking in the customer profile, it probably means that they are high risk customers. So it means that you cannot do this and that. So we try right. to talk about things they see every day, right. not about, you know, abstract systems, you know, and then the compliance and governance. And, and so, so that will just, no one know, cares. that's not, that, that's background noise, noise for a learner. That's, yes, that's, that's, that's absolutely true. Um, again, storytelling is, is, is a Another, good thing in here. But, you know, when, when we talk about storytelling, we often think you will probably do a whole uh, breakfast on this. I already have a few ideas for that. But generally, people think about storytelling as, you know, I have to be like a Hollywood writer. I have to come up with characters for my course and a plot line. And you know, it has to be uh, uh, engaging in it. There should be yeah. plot twists and suspense, suspense, suspense. And, and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, that's that's not true storytelling is you know just telling stories right so uh what we have been doing here we're, we've been trying to tell you a little bit of information but every time we you know if, if you notice we always try and tell a story we have this client you know this happened to me and so on because people respond to that from the time you know when we all sat around the campfire uh in in our you know first with with our sticks uh to today when our pop culture like trains us from from very young age to pay attention to stories, stories are the power. And, you know, just tell stories, simple stories. You know, this happened to me, this happened to that guy. Um, doesn't have to be complex, but it really, really helps to grab this attention in the time of attention deficits. And one thing that, uh, you know, I, I noticed is that um, bite-sized, I don't think works that well in these times as well, because... Um, what we mean by bite-sized bite -size learning, right? Micro learning. Micro learning, um, nano learning sometimes. Like here's yeah. one minute video on this. Here's five minute uh, course on that. And the problem is that, yes, I can find uh, five minutes for something easier than you know, a whole hour. The problem is if you are trying to split an hour into 12 five minute courses, then uh, uh, they will never join into the same thing. Imagine if I were sending you a few pieces of Lego every day uh, for a month. And at the end of the month, I would expect you to actually uh, have the whole Lego piece, you know, built, like maybe it's a castle. Uh, the chances are that by the end of the month, you will have about, you know, 
20% of that thing built, uh, about 40% of stuff just lying there, and the rest just lost somewhere, you know, under the sofa or something like that, or maybe your kids stole it or <laughs> something. Uh, same thing happens when we try to, you know, we think, okay, we're was overwhelmed, you know, attention deficit and whatnot. Let's just split it into smaller pieces and, you know, they will be able to consume those pieces separately uh, uh, when they have time. The fact is they won't, right? Um, so it, it might make more sense to uh, uh, create something, you know, bigger than can be consumed at once, uh, still not huge, but uh, not something that will get lost as, you know, and, and disappear among the smaller tasks because we will never be able to mentally assess it. And then there is a question about the content in that sense, because yeah. you know, there's content, like if there's a big concept that takes two hours to explain and you split it into 20 pieces, that will you get will lost. Lose but, everything. but if there yeah. are like 40 tips on being, you know, perf great salesperson, then uh, uh, you can actually yeah because uh, these tips they work independently exactly right. yeah so it can be it needs to be independent content yeah. that's i think the key here if you think about micro learning they have to be self-sufficient right they don't need the context right. can 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 every little thing live on its own if yes then great if it can't live on its own it has to be in context with something else yeah. don't leave it stranded don't leave it alone and don't cut it up a uh, great example is a company, Latvian company, Intelego, which uh, uh, specializes in corporate psychology, and they produced a deck of cards, and every card is uh, a single concept that helps you to relax and uh, manage your emotions uh, in, in a time of crisis. Like, and it can be shuffled as a deck of cards, and you pull out, pull out a single card and tell you something. If you feel really tense and scared, and you're going before stage, just try and uh, imagine it, something. Yeah, yeah imagine something. Well, yeah. My favorite one was uh, try and uh, strain every muscle in your body like that as, uh, as as strong as you can and hold it as long as you can. And when it finally you break and you know it relaxes, it will relax you to the very end. This is something actually that I used before uh, going public, like in, in super big big show because like everyone has a little bit of stage fright yeah. i think and this is what i've been using but you know that thing alone is like 30 seconds and you can give it like you know take it that's it it's not part of a huge concept so think about this when when you consider bite-sized in these times all right uh last not last you know there's this and one more uh, is the connected stuff Right. This is this doesn't have to do, I think, with working from home and stuff, but it's again fine. You know, this. What about the movie, right? Don't forget, <laughs> movies and chat. Uh, the connected approach. It's the fact that we always feel like we're not alone in our work, in our team, Microsoft Teams uh, messaging chats, in our uh, WhatsApp chats. Uh, when when you're on Facebook, you can see that you know. Uh, you're typing and someone is liking and someone uh, and you're liking and someone is typing you're on google docs and you can see that you know there this, there is this many people watching this document right now you go on youtube you see that you know a million people have already watched this uh you always feel when you're online like you're not alone like this is like a huge city where life is happening uh Unless you go to the LMS, and very often uh, you you just feel like okay, it's you and this huge LMS, and this is your task. Yeah, you, you don't know work. how many people are online with you at that top right. point. You cannot contact them. Right. You cannot see their results. You cannot compete. You cannot yeah connect. Uh, and this is actually is just a choice of technology, I would say. First of all, because sometimes yeah, you just don't have this functionality. Right. But more and more, the, we see that LMSs are just going that direction we right. we have um our customers using uh what is called gamified uh, environments but uh by gamified what i think uh is that it's not about uh, playing a game of course and it's not about badges and points and stuff because what is a game game is an interaction right so the, by gamification, it means that there is this connection and interaction, and it might not have points, badges, you know, and whatever, I and think, awards. Yeah, I think but, previously, uh, the idea of gamification yeah. was that, uh, hey, you, you, like, we are all playing, being, you Com know, Homo Ludus, yeah. we, we, we like to compete, and I want to get more points, and, there, and I want to get another badge, but, you know, it doesn't work for me, like, gamification, when I go to a system that's actually, like, gamified, the cool part is that, hey, 
uh, I'm not alone. There's another guy who's also doing something like that. And maybe he's done more of that or less than uh, of that, or maybe he's better at this or you know, worse a bit. But you know, it, I'm, I'm not alone. There's someone else. And this feeling of having someone else in, in a forum, in even in Google, you see that you know X amount of people have found this useful. Um, and uh, it's, it's everywhere right now, but another, not learning somehow. Yeah, another example, and I was uh, uh, amazed to hear it, uh, was told to me by people who are responsible for the training of the top officials uh, in our country. Uh, and they were talking about a program uh, which was pan, I, I think it was a couple of countries in Europe, uh, Latvia among them, where the top officials of the ministries, you know, called uh, ministry secretaries in our country, but you know, uh, uh, what they did, and it was already during the pandemic, that they created those virtual teamworks on case studies uh, in Zoom. And uh, it was done in a way uh, kind of to understand the proportion that they would have, you know, one or two hours of top lecturers, you know, uh, presenting to that uh, quite, you know, limited group. And then they would split them in teams. And despite the fact that these people were so, uh, you know, they, they, they are very important officials, they don't have a lot of time, they saw that they would spend a lot of time team working with people who are doing the same thing mm -hmm. in another country, dealing with the same problems. So, uh, and then you get this connection and then you get this teamwork. And uh, most importantly, they had very challenging cases, you know, made up cases they had to work on, a little bit of competition. And it all was done just in, it was Microsoft Teams. Yeah. So basically, you don't have a lot of technology. You just have to come up with these ideas how to engage that, people. That was what a funny coincidence. That was my next point exactly. Yeah. Communities uh, can be easy. Yeah, communities yeah. can be easy. Um, you don't need uh, to replace your learning management system with mm. a new one with all the social features and so on. Although if you do want to do that, talk to us first. Um, but uh, yeah, something as simple as a WhatsApp group. Right for people who are yeah. taking this course, um, something as simple as uh, commenting uh, on on a course in LMS, or even uh, sending your feedback to email, and then those feedbacks appear somewhere in the course description, and you know people have taken this in their again connects to the marketing part as well, you know because uh, uh, testimonials are a huge part of marketing of uh, intellectual product, but. Uh, uh, doesn't have to be too complex, you know. Uh, a chat in Microsoft Teams, uh, why why not for the people who are taking this this new yeah, course? And especially, and, you know, they, and they'll start doing it themselves. They'll start talking about it. Yeah, and especially given that what the the feeling I get and the feedback I hear that those face to face trainings uh, that were moved to Zoom uh, are the most tedious ones because okay. it's so hard to sit there for half a day listening to something happening in Zoom. So those have to be reconstructed right. in a way so that there would be much more disconnection interaction. So that listening to somebody talking like both of us right now should not be too much. The mo most uh, um, uh, has to be these uh, teamwork. Right. Uh, yeah. And again, uh, something yeah. that we are uh, very much used to, I think, these days, and again, not we don't see that too much in the learning world, is uh, having a voice, right? You uh, you get a delivery from a courier, you can give them a star rating. You take a taxi, you give them a star rating. You shop online, you give them a star rating. You give stars all the time. You leave comments. You complain. You uh, if if they don't give you this opportunity, you go on Facebook and tell your friends, "Hey, I had this amazing experience or this terrible experience." Or or when you are living through something, you know, you, you film stories for Instagram or, you know, you, a lot of people today expect to, uh, uh, to be heard, right? Uh, and in learning, it's, again, it's super important. It's a huge, huge avenue towards building trust and creating those communities and then creating your own brands, learning and so on. Uh, but... Uh, 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 it's it's so often overlooked, and again, doesn't have to be technologically complex. No. Email might be okay. Um, chat in, in or, or a certain space on Microsoft Teams is more than fine. So consider this in your learning uh, uh, strategy in 2021 for your next e-learning project. 
Um, and you know, this one is actually last but not least. This is the strategic journey. Again, guess the movie. Ex absolutely excellent movie. Uh, strategic journey and uh, uh, just a few things. Uh, when we when we when we talk about journeys and strategy, we mean that you know courses are not one-time events anymore. Uh, courses don't help anymore, I would say, right? You can't expect someone to learn something and then just you know, know this. There's the forgetting curve. We talked yeah. about, we actually have a talk on uh, uh, neurology, essentially, on the, how mind uh, functions around uh, uh, information retention and so on. Um, again, YouTube channel. But uh, uh, generally, you have to think about how person arrives to the point that they actually will take your course uh, and then what happens in that course and also what happens after. And uh, you have to battle the forgetting curve and you have to design for this. And you know the basic only way to combat the forgetting curve is the repeatability. You, know, you repeat and repeat and repeat stuff. But then, again, strategically, there's two kinds of courses where uh, this repeatability will either come to you from life Right. If you train people on uh, sales, yeah, then go and sell, right? Yeah, exactly. They have to be repeating these things. Yeah, or or you know, product knowledge, you know, or a certain systems knowledge, or a certain documentation that is now introduced. They will deal with this documentation regularly, so they will have to kind of come back to that topic all the time. You don't have to really plan for this. But other things like. Um, IT uh, security, uh, you're saying. Yes. Uh, you do not encounter a uh, hack, hacker attack every day to be, you know, very alert uh, uh, every time you receive yeah, an email, so, right? So, so you take, exactly. So you, you take uh, uh, a course on, uh, on, on IT security and then it starts, you know, fading away from your memory. You don't deal with IT security every day. So you have to program, like design those things so that there are either reminders, artificial reminders that you create for people. And I think Ravis has an excellent example about that. Uh, or those reminders can be kind of uh, programmed into people's minds. So when you build your course, when you design it, kind of think when will people in like, can we kind of anchor the idea of IT security to the fact of receiving an email, for example, so that every time a person receives an email, they they uh, are reminded about that. So can you like write the yeah. course what, in such a way? Yeah, what we did at NCA, not me personally, but uh, our head of production and the person responsible for the IT security. So we had this course on IT security. And of course, for us, it's very, very important because we deal with customer information and uh, we produce trainings that are sometimes confidential and so on. And after giving that course, I think it was one month later or one and a half months later, he created a, you know, a fake email and tried to lure people into sharing information. So everybody at Nsea received an email that was pre-constructed by him. And we instantly figured out people who were alert, who were not alert, what they have learned, what they have not learned. So we got a lot of insight from the team so so we could again address it and then we we would we, we would not make people go through the whole course again but there would be a short reminders guys i sent this email yesterday here's what happened this is serious you should have done this this and that you would see that it's a fake email it's not me right. it's a kind of fake identity yeah. so you have to be constructing and thinking about these things especially if they are important to your business but again if they are not important to your business then why are you doing this training if there is nothing happening later, right? Right. Yeah, so it's, uh, um, yeah, th this is an excellent example. And you can't probably do this for every course that you're doing, but for critical stuff, you can, but generally yeah. you have to really think about the courses being, you know, having this repeatability in combat, the uh, forgetting curve, and uh, design the whole journey, not just, you know, the training event. Um, and yes, this, this was an example of testing outside the learning domain, right? So uh, we learn not to learn and we teach not for people to learn something, but for people to change their working behaviors or maybe life behaviors and uh, do something different in uh, their jobs. So when you test people, and uh, uh, again, we have a talk on that on the Kirkpatrick, on the ROI, on, on how you measure learning success in general. And learning success is not when people learn something, but when they actually start doing something differently. So 
checking whether they started doing something differently is a great way of, uh, uh, of, of approaching your learning strategically. And that has to be uh, kept in mind in 2021 and forever, actually. That is a very universal advice. So uh, that is it pretty much from our side. Uh, please let us know if, uh, if this was helpful. Like, uh, uh, again, wave your hand if you like this. We're monitoring you and uh, uh, or type in chat let us know which of those approaches uh, you remembered and you liked you know there has been well, well there's been the sales seven, seven. And marketing and planning and psychology and attention deficit and being connected and planning strategic journeys not just one-time events so if something was new uh, to uh, to you let us know if something you if there's something you want us to expand on we, we will be very happy to do like a full hour on that this recording will be on our youtube channel very soon the youtube channel uh, link and this specific recording will be emailed to you and everyone who did not uh, have a chance to participate right now and uh, join yeah, us we, in two I weeks. see from the comments that uh, it was not that easy to find our YouTube channel. So we will, <laughs> yes, yes we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, send you an email uh, with that uh, and we'll try to make it more visible. Somehow yes. it was not easy to find, right? Uh, so. Because it's, it's small, not many people have subscribed so far. We're working on this as soon as more people subscribe. It will pop up in search. We we will actually uh, get our content out right now. It's uh, under private links. We will be actually like, doing the full uh, uh, official launch uh, later today. And uh, we'll send you links and we'll promote it everywhere. And we really hope that it will be useful to you and another means of connecting with us. But the main means of connecting with us is actually giving us a call or writing an email. We're always happy to talk. Um, and we'll see you uh, in two weeks from now with yeah. our next breakfast. Uh, tell your friends and colleagues and people from other and companies. And we haven't picked the topic I think yet we have we have a few ideas. Few ideas. So if there is something you would like to uh, feed in, uh, tell us uh, what interests you, what you find the most kind of a pressing issue. Uh, just let us know, and we will figure out how to address it. Absolutely, yeah. as we always do. As we always do. Thank you for watching. Uh, it and was Ravis and Sergey at Inte Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.